On the first new podcast of 2024 for Seen a Nerd, we will be discussing What If Season 2, the latest news from Star Wars, Star Trek, and The Last of Us, what we're looking forward to in 2024, and more nerd news items coming up now. A nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Balmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well. Happy to be recording a new episode at the, in the new year with you. Yes. Now, yes. our anniversary is coming up. It is. It is. It end is. of this month. Yeah. End of this month. And it'll be eight? Six. Seven? Yeah. Seven, eight years. Yeah. I think we started in, what, 2017. Yeah. That's not... That's That's... Oh, that is seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Man. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, covered a lot of ground. <laughs> yeah. I always know that it's, because um, it's 2007, 2017 is when we started, and it was right after I moved back to Fairbanks. Yeah. Briefly. Yeah. Very briefly. Um, so I know we had a late, later start and back in the good old Arrowverse days doing crossover and spring returns, man. Yeah. yeah. Covered a yeah. lot of ground. Yeah. We started. Yeah. Cause, uh, yeah, I, I remember it because, um, second half, you know, part B re- return and actually, and if, after our first recording, I, I actually, I remember it cause I, I went to a buddy of mine's wedding and at Pittsburgh and it was, uh, yeah. So, uh, recorded and then the next, I think the next day or so I, I got on a plane to, to Pittsburgh to like, and just tell them all about, Hey, I guess it's just like really cool podcast with, uh, someone <laughs> that I met on Twitter <laughs> and read their stuff on the blog. And yeah, here we are, here we are, you know, Oh, 2024 okay. many years many years later <laughs> yeah happy 2024 everyone yeah it's the new year and it'll be over before we know it just like yep. last year um and yep. to start us off um did you we took a two-week break did you watch anything interesting over the two uh, weeks um honest other than what if uh did not catch any movies i had planned to but um the between Christmas and New Year's just kind of chilled, and then last week um, went to Puerto Rico and didn't really watch any TV at all. <laughs> so okay. yeah, yeah, I yeah I was just kind of busy, busy enjoying uh, enjoying some downtime. Nice, very good, yeah. very good. Yeah. Um, all right, so Caitlin De- Denver, Dever, Dever, Dever. Like I always hear it pronounced as Denver. Yeah, I've heard is it pronounced Denver, two ways. or is it Dever? I think it's Dever. Dever. Um, like the news story here is clearly how to pronounce her last name, people. So exactly. I don't know what you were expecting. <laughs> um, has been cast as Abby in The Last of Us season two, alongside Young Mazzino as Jesse and Isabella Mursad as Dina. Um, I am closed book on Last of Us Part Two. Um, so, Will, what do you think about this casting news? Because I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, basically, we uh, we know that Last of Us Season Two is slated to start filming next month, and uh, hopefully, Pedro will be out of the sling. If you do, if you watch the Golden Globes this week, I guess he had a little spill. I guess when he was at his dad's house and. Um, but he says he's going to be good to go to start filming. As far as these castings, I know Caitlin was, um, I know it was my understanding, she was uh, fan casted a lot for for people wanting her to be Ellie to, before they cast uh, Bella Ramsey. But, uh, and, and, you know, some people, you know, and of course folks were really pushing hard, I think, for the actress who played Abby in the video game to get cast. But I know she was actually in a scene um in, in season one 
So um, that would never happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know um, why people would think that would have happened. Never would have happened. The age just yeah. doesn't make sense. The age just right. doesn't make sense. So yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So, but I do know. Yeah, but I, I yeah, but I'm a little familiar with some. Again, not like you will be closed book for people who haven't watched Last of Us or played the game The Last of Us. I'm one but, of those folks, but I have. Yeah, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything um, too much because uh, I, you know, because like me, I want folks to explore, you know, to experience the show um, for themselves and, and not get spoiled from any cutscenes or anything after, after, you know, out there until after season two happens, which I guess probably won't be until 2025 uh, if, they're, they're, if they're filming right now. So. Uh, but yeah, I think these are these are all very from critical characters, at least what I do know of the series uh, for of the game uh, for season two. So uh, yeah, so we'll probably see some, you know, probably see a few more um, things, and um, and then also just thinking about Pedro, you know, as I mentioned him earlier, uh, I guess he is he is filming that. He dropped out of a horror film um, that uh, he was going to be. Filming after he finished The Last of Us uh, because looks like he's going to be a little bit busy with Fantastic Four this year, which apparently is going to be supposed to start filming in the third or fourth quarter of this year, and then I guess at some point he'll 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 uh, do some type of work with some news that we're also going to talk about here tonight as well. Is he going to be in the new Star Trek movie? Uh, not that. One. Well, he's been in everything else, but is he going to be in the Supergirl movie? Star Wars. Star Wars? Yes. Oh. Oh. Oh, as the man. Oh, because the Mandalorian is getting a movie. That's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> kind of backed into that one. We're back in mid-season form, y'all. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I was just yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, the Mandalorian and Grogu are like both the Mandalorian and Grogu are getting movies. No, it's going. It's a movie. It's, it's the Mandalorian and Grogu is the movie that was announced this week. As oh, they're together. Oh, the movie yeah. is called The Mandalorian and Grogu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars. Why? <laughs> All right. Like this is why a part of me. It's just becoming anti-Star Wars. You know, you got all this walk-in. You got very generic titles going on. You got... At least that's, yeah, at least that's the working title. They may come up with something more imaginative, I would, I would imagine. But, do, but, uh, because Mandalorian and Grogu, I know that's what we all call the series, including Boba Fett. But come on! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luca isn't getting her own movie, right? Like they're just doing a season two. Right, right. So yeah, so that was part of the announcement that came from Lucasfilm earlier in the week. So um, as as we clumsily backed into it, uh, the Mandalorian Grogu are filming a will start production on a feature film uh, later this year. I guess is what the release said from from. Um, from Lucasfilm, John Favreau is going to be directing it, uh, and also, of course, Kathleen Kennedy and Filoni will be producing it as well. Uh, and also, one thing that is uh, of note with this is not that they're still planning on doing a Mandalorian season four for for Disney Plus, in addition to to the feature film. So, I guess I guess either they'll maybe film shoot them all together. Uh, depends, you know, like with season three, Pedro was hardly there physically. He did mostly voice work because he was, you know, tired of having to wear that helmet all the time. And Brendan Wayne stepped in to, um, um, and then I think Latif Crowder, I think his name, I think did the body work for most of the man, most of Mando scenes, um, as far as the physical presence in the third season. So maybe we'll see some of that in the third, in the, with the film and, and the fourth season as well. So given how busy Pedro is going to be with, Obviously, The Last of Us, and then, and of course, uh, Fantastic Four uh, is also supposed to start filming later this year. And he's got a couple other projects going on, too. So that's the, that's the Star Wars news. And then, of course, yeah, Soka Season 2 will be in development. 
Um, no word as far as like when a second season will actually be filming or anything like that. But I guess we 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 will we will have a Soka season two some point down the road. Um. So so to continue on this Pedro Pascal through line, um, I noticed that he did not win the Golden Globe instead. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, instead, it went to Kieran Culkin, which you know what? I until I watched Kieran's speech, I didn't even realize like Pedro was nominated in that category because to me, Joel is a leading role, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Semantics. Yeah. Um so when Karen when I saw Karen Culkin one, I was like, hell yes, finally. That I love his character in all of the seasons. And I mean, he's despicable and you shouldn't really like him, but I mean it's it's not Homelander. So right, right. <laughs> um, so I was just so happy that he finally got recognition. Uh, and, and then I l- listened to the speech and I was like, oh, Pedro's gonna get it for season two. (laughs) Like, like I can. That's the thing with these award shows. Sometimes, especially if a if a show that has already been honored a lot gets its final season and the final season is strong, then a lot of it's gonna be like more of a an award for all the seasons. While Mm -hmm. the new ones, kind of, it's like you'll get yours. Don't yep. worry about it. <laughs> and and Pedro got the Emmy though, right? Uh, he's been nominated. Emmys are airing this week. I think okay, Sunday. Okay, that's week. really yeah. strange to me because I could have sworn back in the good old days, like the normal days, Emmys yeah. were in September. What they, the heck they, happened? Yeah, it's right. Huh. They got they got pushed back. So oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I as much as I love Karen, ooh. Ooh, I don't know. I would be happy with either of them winning. I do love my, me a good upset. So, but I I will be more shocked if Kieran gets the Emmy and Pedro doesn't. I will say mm-hmm. that. Um, what were your thoughts about the Golden Globes um, wins? And I have no idea who was nominated for SEG, so I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> Yeah, I got a couple things for SAG, but uh, honestly, um, you know, I, I really didn't pay much attention to the Globes this year. I mean, the things that I, what a little bit I did here, like you know, obviously Oppenheimer won for uh, best, I guess, best drama film, and of course, Nolan won best director. Uh, I did see your thing about, you know, about Succession and, and Kieran, and of course, I think Succession got all like pretty much all the hardware because again in last season ep- oh. seasons usually rack up on the things but you know honestly everything i heard about the globes is more not so much about who won and who lost but it was just more about like the the host and how bad he was <laughs> so and so, and taylor swift if taylor, taylor swift, swift yeah breathes in a room you're going to hear about it for at least 20 minutes yeah yeah so, yeah so yeah. It, yeah, so th- those were, you know, so honestly, those were the things that I heard that I re- have heard about the Golden Globes more so than than the. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be like Jeff Schneider and all, all, who's just like, you know, fuck the Globes, but at the same time, it wasn't anything that really made any waves with me. Um, other than I saw where you had to, like where you tweeted about Succession, and I was like, oh, that's Did probably I? how. I listen. Yeah, Did that's I? the only reason why I knew that Kieran Culkin won. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Will yeah. says it, and and I, I'm sure y'all saw this on Twitter. Will got older this, like, while they're on break. He got way older. So he says it now, now that I know. <laughs> he says <laughs> it as if a retweet counts as me tweeting. Like, to my, in my young mind, <laughs> the generation gap here. <laughs> Uh, see that's yeah. See that's just wrong. And I knew you, I knew you were gonna do it. I was like, okay, where was she gonna like drop the drop the will got a year older? <laughs> In my young mind, <laughs> I view like me actually writing out a few a sentence, maybe a few words here. That's a tweet. Retweeting something. 
I read here, eat so much stuff, and I like a lot of stuff, especially if I like things, because yeah. half the times I have to send things to my mom, but that's a whole nother story. So, <laughs> so sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I saw I saw I, your yeah, retweet. retweet. I just I also sh I just I just went short chain. I just short handed there, but I, yes, I saw your retweet that he won. So that's the only reason why I knew about it. Yeah. Retweeted it. Um, or repost, okay. whatever whatever the hell they call it on X now. <laughs> And you had um, some thoughts about the SAG nominations. Yeah, I mean, it, to your question about uh, Pedro, I mean, he, you know, basically the SAG nominations, he was nominated for Last of Us season one. Of course, uh, Kieran, uh, Brian Cox, and Matthew McFadden were all nominated for Succession, but Jeremy yeah, Strong Matthew was actually left off. the competition there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's basically, yeah, so it'll probably get, they'll all divide amongst themselves and Billy Crudup will probably end up winning it for the morning show. <laughs> no, no, I don't no. think there's a chance. No, that. it'll probably go to Kieran or, or probably Matthew. No, it, <clears throat> because Matthew has, in my mind, from what I understand, won more awards overall for his performance. So mm -hmm. if it's a competition between Last of Us and Succession, then Matthew's the contender versus Pedro. So, and and having having one show with three nominations, like it can divide, like that would break it apart, and then likely Pedro would get it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just yeah. don't. I'll, I will. I will be shocked if you're right, and it'll go to Billy Crudup because I'm like that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, but I, you know, but, you know, the cool thing about the SAGs and in particular in the movie categories, I mean, I, I did see where um, obviously Oppenheimer, Barbie, as far as ensemble film, you know, they, 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 they you know, with with the SAG awards, they, you know, do it by best, um, you know, best motion picture cast instead of saying best picture. So it's like American fiction, Barbie, Color Purple, Killers of the Flower Moon and Oppenheimer. So, you know, I figured Oppenheimer will, well, that one I figure is more likely going to be Oppenheimer or maybe American fiction. I've heard great things about American fiction. I want to watch it now, but, yeah. um, and then as far as other, other, other things that just sort of stuck out with me, uh, I guess Coleman Domingo has been really, I've heard a lot of this buzz on some of the uh, YouTube shows that I watch about, uh, his performance in Rustin. So we'll see what happens there. But, um, yeah, the SAG Awards, which is voted up, is the award voted upon by all the Screen Actor Guild members uh, and their peers, uh, which a lot of times is some probably better indicator of where things may go with the Oscars. Uh, that one, that that ceremony is coming up in February, and it'll yeah. be streamed live on Netflix. Oh, Netflix's YouTube channel. So. Interesting. Yeah. Um. All right. So um, explain to me why and how Cat Williams on Club Shay Shay breaks the internet. Yeah, so this no, is one of those. Us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Cat Williams, who's a very, very famous comedian, um, <laughs> was on um, Shannon Sharp, who, um, Unk yeah, is, is his nickname. He's, he's, um, Former professional football player, now used to be on Fox Sports with Skip Bayless with their talk show. Now he's on, uh, he has this YouTube channel. And and so he had Cat Williams on. Uh, and Cat basically just pulled back the curtain on Black Hollywood and just basically just dropped all kind of truth bombs about everything from Cedric the Entertainer still in his jokes to how you know if you if you've watched Friday After Next and and Money Mike, um, how he was how uh, there was you know whole casting things with that and how uh, Money Mike you know he was um, oh gosh I'm blanking on the other actor who was supposed to, who was, who who allegedly was supposed to play it but uh, he was just like dropping all kinds of truth bombs about that uh you know, about tiffany haddish i mean it was just basically cat just 
had all the receipts and he was just like throwing them all out there on the internet to the point where this thing went viral. I mean, it has had like, at least as of earlier today, when I looked at uh, Shannon Sharp's YouTube channel, it had like 43 million views. And even like the breakout segments of like first various portions of the interview, it was like a two, I watched the whole thing. It was like about two and a half hours long. And it's just fascinating. I mean, and and yeah, I mean, even he even talks about ludicrous and how uh, and ludicrous and and cat were all for movie roles. How like uh, Steve Harvey hit, hit, you know, his his whole get up. How like Kevin Hart basically came from the East Coast and had everything set up for him, and he didn't have to work at, at all. I mean, Cat was just laying it all out there. And the interesting thing about it whenever people were no one like no one's out and out said cat was lying <laughs> right right and, and 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 when they had rebuttals they were very like weak if they did say anything they were just like weak very weak rebuttals like when kevin hart re- had his rebuttal to the cat it was just like come on man da, 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 da. oh yeah by the way go watch my new thing coming on netflix next week but he didn't like say cat was lying i mean it was just it was just Again, it really did break the internet as far as like this is the one thing I did see when I was in Puerto Rico. I was like, what's this thing about Cat Williams? And I like kind of looked at it and I was just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So uh yeah, it's still going. And it's like encouraged other people in other parts of media to be doing the same thing to various, you know, they all want to be able to get their Cat Williams moment, but no one has no one has come close to Cat Williams moment. Mean? Just trying to like like for example, in the sports media, uh, Jason Whitlock, who is uh, African American um, journalist, sports writer, has his he has basically like alienated like everyone. He always shit talks about Stephen A. Smith, who is um, well known on ESPN and is pretty much the face of ESPN. And Stephen A. finally just he just had it. He's like no more. If you're going to be pulled, if you're going to, Stephen A just has, has recently released an autobiography. And, uh, and Whitlock was basically like saying that Stephen A lied about his own, his, his background in the autobiography, his memoir. And, um, and Stephen A yesterday just like lit him up and just basically like had all the receipts and, and, uh, <clears throat> tore Jason a new one um on his youtube channel and yeah. uh and 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 then there's that and there's a the whole course the whole aaron Rodgers stuff going on as far as him and jimmy kimmel i mean so there's been a lot of just i was like there's just been a lot of like things happening in the world of entertainment this week that um you know we're only two weeks really if, yeah two weeks into to the new year and it's just so many things going on not not even get into like all the football coaches retiring and stuff um but um from my perspective what i'm hearing is probably men who ended up watching with their wives or their girlfriends or their daughters um the real housewives of salt lake season mm-hmm. salt lake city, city season four finale because there were receipts there was timeline. There was evidence. <laughs> Monica knows what she did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that was just all over all of my social media. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And I swear, anyone. I heard, I heard about I heard about it, too. <laughs> yeah, of course, because anyone who talked to uh, Jennifer Lawrence on the red carpet of the Globes always went there because everyone knows how much of a Bravo fan Jennifer Lawrence is. And oh, she like she even said they deserve her Oscar um, for that. So so yeah, I, I think I think that kicked off the new year and and all of these men who are like hiding in the kitchen listening to the drama with these women they're like okay i see i see how we play these games i get it you gotta have your receipts your timeline yep (laughs) (laughs) oh my god ah drama gotta love it especially if it's real so to speak um the last bit of news is a new star trek film is being developed yes yeah so um this dropped yesterday and um a new 
Star Trek film that apparently that is actually being directed by um, Toby Haynes, who also did a lot of the directing and Andor season one, and also did a pretty uh, Trek centric episode of uh, Black Mirror is going to be behind this uh, new this new feature film, which is the first one that Star Trek has had since uh, 2016. Um, and it apparently is set decades before the um, 2009 uh, film that basically created the, the divergence in the Star Trek timeline from the original series that, um, which is the prime timeline, and then there's the timeline that was created in the, in the uh, 2009 Star Trek film called the Kelvin timeline. And so there's a lot of there's still there's a lot of debate among fandom and in in the trades and stuff as far as like what does this mean is it going to be you know since it's a it's a prequel film is it going to be decades before in the in the Kelvin timeline that was created in the 2009 Star Trek or is it going to be set in the Prime timeline uh, that uh, where Kirk where the original series and most of the shows are. It, are, are currently set in so uh, i guess we'll get more details as to, as as to as the script and everything gets developed uh but also that was a part of this news is that um the star trek 4 uh film that it, that uh where chris pond plays crap captain kirk and all of that cast in the in the kelvin timeline is still in active development so there's still talk after many years and that this film is still a go. So uh, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, both Star Wars and Star Trek are, are both heading back to the theaters. Nice. Yep. All right. Um, so while they are headed back to the theaters, um, What If remains on the small screen on Disney Plus and season two dropped daily over the break. Um, Will, I think you watched it day by day. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 last week, last Thursday, a week ago, I did two episodes. Then I did two episodes on Friday. Then on Sunday, I just binged, not because I'm a fan of this season, but because I just wanted to get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> last five episodes. Um, all right. So the first episode is What If Nebula Joined the Nova Corps? How did you feel about this episode, Will? So I, I like this episode. I, as we were talking pre-show, I, um, I was very up and down uh, with with this second season. Uh, the episodes that I really liked, they 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 really went went well for me, and I really was watched them locked in. And some of the other ones, uh, I was kind of like, huh. Oh. Okay, but um, this one I, I really liked. You know, it was definitely got the Blade Runner vibe, and that was one of the things I felt with with some of those earlier episodes. They felt they were very like, you know, very clear. You know, were clearly inspired by other other properties, and this one was one was definitely like sort of the Blade Runner esque thing. Uh, pretty cool. I did whenever Jude Law's name came up on the opening credits, I was just like, oh, we're, we're you know we're gonna get Yon Rog and um you know and, and, and you know tying things back to the to the, the first captain marvel film and and it, it was just very cool to see you know howard the duck and, and and some of those things I, I understand that they thought about holding this particular episode to the third season and basically given the vibe of the episode versus some of the other episodes in uh in season two i could see why they would probably want to would probably been better to maybe to have held this one off um to the third season of the series because it 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 for me it didn't seem to like lead into you know the, the sort of captain um captain carter through line in, in, in many of these episodes this one seemed kind of like an outlier uh, to to that, but I you know, but I, I but I did enjoy it and uh, thought it was a pretty cool, pretty good start to to the second season. Um, I didn't like this episode. 
Um, I actually, I don't think Nebula should have been the main character in this. If you're going to have Nebula as the main character, you need someone else. And yes, you have Yangar, but it wasn't enough. And it felt like it took a while for us to get, it felt like it, we took too long to get to Yangar and then mm -hmm. to have them like have to partner up and then the inevitable betrayal. And it's right. just like. Okay, but what about those 20 minutes where I just spent time with Nebula, who is good when she has someone to bounce off of? She's so much mm -hmm. of a straight character. Yeah. Um, I'm not talking about sexuality. I'm talking about just in terms of comedy and in terms of persona that you need her interacting with like a Peter Quill in order for there to be, um, in my opinion, more entertainment. And I understand the whole um, Blade Runner vibe that that was cool. That was intriguing. And then quickly I was just like, oh my God, so boring. <laughs> but, um, yeah. How but I, feel I, about watched, Blade Runner. <laughs> I watched this and I've never seen either any Blade Runner movie. Nope. Yeah. Um, I watched this back to back with the second episode. What if Peter Quill attacked Earth Mightiest Heroes? And I much prefer the second episode to the first episode, um, even though I still have issues pretty much with all of these episodes just across the board. I, I liked this one because we're getting a different version of the Avengers um, mm -hmm. with all of these characters. They're bringing back old faces pun intended <laughs> <laughs> and and yet at the same time we're we're getting that twist of like what if yondu did give peter to ego and and then ego went f like like his plan happened sooner rather than later um so so i enjoyed this episode um i th i thought there there was much more of an ensemble and a much more slew of, of, of faces that I knew and didn't have to like scratch my head and be like, okay, I should know where you're from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what did you think about this one? Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I liked this episode much better than the first one. And uh, it was cool seeing like uh, Bill, I had, I had, it took me a moment to remember who Bill uh, Foster was. And then I remember, you know, because I don't think, in, in the in the Ant-Man films, I don't think uh, did he ever become Goliath? I don't think he ever I, did. I feel like it was talked about though. Yeah, yeah. Um, how he did so, it. How he did it. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, to see King T'Chaka uh, in, in his prime and uh, Hank in his prime, mostly in his prime. Um, and it, it, those it, it was nice just having that different vibe of of avenger and truly getting into that that what if realm um because that was the you know to your point when when you said uh, you know yandu did carry through with giving quill to um to ego um it yeah it is it's sort of like uh, it, it, you know, definitely rooted it back into the into the the MCU that we're familiar right. with. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like w I know that origin story, so then yeah. the twist it doesn't take me too long to be like, okay, I see what they're doing here. And to that point, I also feel as though if next season they want to do a sequel episode, almost they leave the door open where now I'm curious. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, what if, does this mean that Peter's going to live with Hope and her dad? And and is Hope and her, him going to, like, get together eventually? I was I was sensing some vibes there. And then you got this Winter Soldier who's suddenly out there. Like, like they, I wouldn't mind them continuing with, like, continuing with an excerpt well, the adventure continues over here because I, I think it's interesting what they did with these this ensemble um, yeah. in this episode. Yeah, completely. Yeah. All right. And that brings us to the Christmas episode. What if Happy Hogan saved Christmas? The diehard version. Um, yeah. What were your thoughts on this? I enjoyed... I enjoyed aspects of this one. I was I was mixed to be to be honest um, on this on this episode. Uh, when happy, I think I was 
it was good seeing it was fun seeing Justin hammer back, you know, Sam Rockwell doing his thing. Uh felt like it was a much uh, you know, that was probably about the only highlight of Iron Man three. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, with 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 in that film. Uh so it's cool to see that back. Um but the whole like happy doing becoming the freak and stuff, I don't know. It just I like the I like the the Die Hard vibes because it just is kind of like okay we we are fully going that Die Hard is indeed a Christmas movie, <laughs> and I think they even had a joke within the, if I recall or maybe I'm making this up but because I did watch it right around Christmas, um, when it aired, um, you know sort of getting into the whole controversy about whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie or not, but um, it is a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas movie. All right. See, this is why you and I are still doing this podcast together. We're okay. Controversy. <laughs> I still don't feel like I've actually ever fully watched Die Hard. I'll admit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will. For some reason, it's one of those movies where I know what it is. I've seen so many clips of it, but do yeah. I actually feel as though, like, have I actually sat down and watched All that? Right. I really don't think so. <laughs> I'm All right. not sure. so we're gonna have to do a scene and nerd watch along of Die Hard. No. no, no. Yeah. Yes. Yes, no. we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but <laughs> uh, yeah. you those for Wonder Woman, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. Uh, no, we don't have to do it live. We can just like do it like you know. Anyway, we can talk about it offline. Getting back to the uh, getting back to the episode here. Um, but uh, yeah, but like I said, the the back half of it, whenever he becomes a freak and stuff, it just kind of lost me. And I was just like, eh. and and also, uh, and also Darcy. I mean, it's just I just never have really liked that character. So um, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I was I was very mixed about this there, that, that one. There were elements of it I liked, but there are also elements of it where I was just like, okay. I checked out hardcore on this episode. Um, yeah. I knew immediately where it was going. I didn't care. I was like, let's move on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I just I did not care at all about anything. I. I didn't think it was an interesting twist. I didn't think that it was, um, it didn't bring back any characters who I was like, oh my God, I'm so grateful. Like we're finally returning to this character or expand upon any of um, the the minor characters in other movies. So I just, I, I barely watched this episode just mm-hmm. like, like I was talking about Die Hard, which is why we'll never do a watch along because, <laughs> <laughs> good lord, apparently I just can't sit through it. Um, and now it's interesting because I watched this again back to back with What If Iron Man Crashed Into the Grand Master. And mm-hmm. at first, I was, when I read the title, I was thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to like this one because I love Thor Ragnarok. I do. Yeah. And And they did that twist. But as it went on, yeah. I, I checked out so much. <laughs> yeah, I needed same. a day break after these two episodes. <laughs> there was just something about it where I was like, I should be liking this. I should be laughing. I should be entertained. I am not. <laughs> yeah. And by the time there felt like there was the never ending race at the mm-hmm. end, I was mm-hmm. just like. What are what are we doing here? Like, yeah. what if we didn't do this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I'm there with you on this one. This, yeah, it, this one and another one that we'll get to were were ones where they were definitely at my bottom um, uh, of the of the series uh, for season two. Um, yeah, and, and for just the reasons that you articulated, and we can move to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know what I articulated. There was just something about it where I I was on board and then I quickly jumped off and was like, oh yeah. god, this is not good. This is not yeah. good. Um, and, and it, yeah, yeah. And that brings us to what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? So, Will, what yeah. about this episode? I was okay with this one. 
Um, you know, it was a, it was a sequel to follow up to episode from earlier. Um, it, um, yeah, I mean, it was, I, I, it was entertaining after, after it was one of those, uh, that after the fourth episode, getting to this one, I, it, there were elements of it that I was like, oh yeah, you know, it reminded me of some things as far as the Red Room from, from Black Widow film, seeing the whole sequence there when they're in the little training area, um, there at, at the end of the episode was, um, and, and of course the twist where Steve was was basically a, being used to, to to lure Peggy and um, Black Widow into it, it, into the uh, trap there. Um, it, I, I was really entertained by this particular episode, uh, even though I saw the twist coming. Another thing I thought too was just like, um, you know, and no matter what you know, no matter what universe. Steve nor Peggy or will ever get their happy ending. Oh, they got in our universe. Yeah. Well, Technically. yeah, eventually. I mean, yeah, but I don't know what that means. If that's like the one off or yeah. if, if, Maybe. In, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, that, that, and they did, they did raise that very point in, in the, in the season that most place, you know, every, normally they don't, it doesn't happen and that, that there was the one time and I guess our I guess the 616 is the universe where it did happen yeah yeah where where Steve became Captain America so right it, yeah. it, I so I don't I'm pretty sure I okay this episode is fine yeah. Um, I I like it more in retrospect because I like the through line that it it carries in terms of Captain Carter and the later episodes, mm-hmm. uh, which I think was lacking, especially with the first what I would argue half of the season is I was not feeling connected to anything, too many things all over the place, yes. um, and and so I appreciate that. At the same time. I have never really been invested in the whole Steve Rogers and Peggy Carter dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> so I find it so I actually I'm going to not talk about that until we get to a later episode. So okay. on that point, this episode was fine as a fan of Captain America Two: winter soldier. I appreciated all the callbacks and references mm-hmm. to that movie. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I would have not liked this as much as I liked it. So, so it was fine. Um, yeah. which brings us to, um, what I'm learning is the, the original character, yep. um, Kahari, what mm-hmm. if Kahari reshaped the world, which was <laughs> my only thing about this is I was just like, why are we getting this halfway through the season after Happy already already saved Christmas? I mean, Thanksgiving comes before Christmas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so it just like was like, whoa. Um, so we 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 meet Kahari, um, and the whole what if scenario is um the um what is it called? The Tesseract, yeah. Tesseract. I knew it started with a T, but I'm like, I yep. can't form a word right now. The Tesseract ends up um, hitting this planet, and and it, it makes a lake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, yep. I'm doing it so well. It was Paul, yeah, Ponce de Leon was looking for, yeah, he was looking for the Fountain of Youth, um, yep. and, and, and we found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we yeah. found it, and there's a parallel world, and it reminded me a lot of um, who's the bad guy in Black Panther two? Uh, Black Panther two. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, Chocolate Town. Namor. Yeah. Namor. 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 Yeah. Namor. And, it, yeah, I was thinking the the, the places. I guess Tal- Talacan, but uh, yeah, but Namor yeah. is the bad guy, I, and I got that vibe from it too. Yeah, it it reminded me of that, which I appreciated. So I like how this is an original character, mm-hmm. but because of some of the other um 
stories that we've been told throughout the MCU, it still felt familiar. Yeah. Um, and it didn't stand out too much. Yeah. And I um I did understand by the end of it why they included this story. Um, because while they were talking about Namori um bringing peace and um and what makes a hero in my mind considering i just watched the the first official um, captain carter episode of this season i was like oh okay so i wonder if these two are gonna ever meet (laughs) later on (laughs) in the season um that would make sense to me because they both demonstrate those same qualities um and then at the end of this episode dr strange appears um, and tells Kahari that um, he's been looking for her for a while. So um, it left us on somewhat of a cliffhanger. But what did you think about um, this new world? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we touched on it some. Uh, definitely got vibes from other um, you know, other MCU movies and, and shows. Uh, it, it, was, it was cool that they actually introduced a, a new character uh you could unique to the mcu and uh and you know part of part of my thought was like okay we, we do have this new character you know I, just thinking ahead to like when will we see her will we will we see her in live action and, and in what context uh but as far as the episode in and of itself um i i liked it i was in it but this is one of those ones where um i i I just didn't get fully engaged in it um um, you know i I just kind of it was if you're going to do a what if this was i was like okay on the one hand i I liked it in the sense that this is truly a what if type of scenario out as far as like even though it's a character created unique to the mcu um we you know we, we we see something from the mcu as far as the tesseract and 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 those powers you know bringing brought on into a into this this world here and and so it was it was it was nice from that standpoint but at the same time um it, I, I don't know it just it, it just sort of like left me like where where where, where is this going to take us and and, and not this as far as far as narratively with this 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 season of of, of the show because it, it it's sort of like those earlier episodes it's just sort of like kind of jumping around <laughs> but but even like but but of course we later know why they did it and it, even like with happy with the Die Hard episode why he became the freak so you know the, the, all those things did pull together so when, when I look at it from a whole it the episode does stand out from that standpoint but uh but you know but thinking of how i watched it real time um over over the holidays i yeah my initial reaction was sort of like hmm okay this is interesting let's, let's see where see where this goes yeah i i i hear you because i kind of was watching as like i don't care i don't care <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then Doctor Strange shows up, and I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, 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 yeah. Um, I I think why personally, my perspective is, I think after season one, mm-hmm. season one, there were a few episodes that left a, such a were so good to for me, mm-hmm. and I went into that season with such low expectations for it that I walked away very surprised by how much I enjoyed myself. Yeah. While with season two, now now that I got season one and I liked season one, I went into here being like, oh, they're just going to match it. Yeah. And I think I almost had too high of expectations. Yeah. I, I, I had, yeah. And so none of this like really spoke to me. And, and arguably, they weren't utilizing the characters um, specifically Spider-Man like they did in the first season mm-hmm. that I'm like, I want to he- see more what if scenarios with those people um, and and we'll get to it later. So that made me really happy by then where I was like, oh yeah, you <laughs> I'm interested <laughs> in from the first season. 
Um, but that brings us to what if Hela found the Ten Rings, where we essentially get Hela in um Shang-Chi. <laughs> Shang-Chi. I just I completely blanked on it. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel uh-huh. bad. I yeah, I'll just go ahead and say it. I this is this is the one that I I I fell asleep on it twice. Remember, I we shouldn't be surprised because we know how much you don't like Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> so that has <laughs> that has made you despise anything Thor related. Yeah, uh, that was funny when you were saying about characters, and I was like, uh, you know, can we dial it back a little bit about Thor? I, mean, I love Chris Hemsworth. I love what they did with Thor and Ragnarok and stuff, but I'm feeling like he's getting overutilized now. <laughs> Well, he he was well, yeah. Actually, I take it back. We did see Thor a little bit, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's Loki when you need him? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I so so now that I understand where you sit on this episode, I I prefer this over like the first episode. Mm-hmm. It, it's like mid for me. Um, I. And why I think the only reason why I really like it is because Kate Planchette. Yeah. <laughs> like. And even that voice, even for me, that didn't work. <laughs> like, her God, voice just, just, just for me has a presence and I'm like, I'm listening. Anybody else talks? I'm like, I'm checked out. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care. Um, and I, and I like the idea overall, um, especially these two worlds would fit. But I think, again, I think with this episode, with the Nebula episode, with the Iron Man, it feels like we spend in those episodes that I'm now that I'm thinking about it. It seems like we we spend a lot of the episode with one character Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and with the episodes that stand out to me that I actually felt like I watched the full episode and didn't check out were were the ones with the team ups yeah, yeah where i felt like we had more of an ensemble mm-hmm, and so yeah. the pacing matched because with an ensemble you you can't like sit around and just stare at each other all the time you got to keep it moving yeah, um yeah. so so it matches that fast pace which which is allotted when you have only a half hour to 44 minutes to fill so i i think that's why there's a lot of these that were very are not working for us because it, it the the pace of them it just doesn't match what what can be um can occur in terms yeah, yeah. of a a half hour episode yeah yeah and and i think regard you know whether it's animation or live action you know i think both what you just said is true but mm-hmm. even with the exquisite, I really, I mean, the animation with this show, I really, I really, I really like it. And, but I think, but the thing is, like a lot of exposition or staying with one character a lot of times in animation, if it's not a lot of dynamic things going on, then it also, it, it can drag. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, it yeah, really and yeah. So, so I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to knock on the animation because I, you know, I think as far as I, I like the style uh, that they have in in What If, but um, but whatever reason, I mean, I, and I try my best to give uh, that What If Hell found the the Ten Rings a watch, and you know, when I got, whenever they did get to the part where she, you know, she it was just cast out, and whenever she was getting the training from, um, um. You know, training from uh, J.I. J.I. I can't remember. I think it's how you pronounce her name. Those are those are some elements that were a little bit more interesting. But I just, I just, and maybe it's just because I just never was invested in this character in live action that it just just didn't resonate with me. And, yeah, and, that and makes Kate, sense. Yeah, and and Kate Blanchett is nothing against her, but it's just I just this is one of those characters that just. It, to, to your point. There's some characters that just work, and there's some characters that you know that resonate with you and stay with you, and and there's others that don't. And if they, if yeah, and, and I think this is one of those characters she just never has. 
Yeah, I think I would find it interesting if Hella and Nebula teamed up. Yeah. In an episode. <laughs> I'm just, I'm thinking about it, that I think that Hella brings that Loki charm mm -hmm. that would bounce off of Nebula, I think, in a really good way. Yeah. Like, I would find that more interesting than if they did a Nebula Gamora team up. Oh, yeah, totally. totally yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's funny, I talk about all these team, this team up stuff. Um, and then we're going to talk about episode eight. What if the Avengers assembled in 1602? Okay, this, this episode, I rank real low. <laughs> <laughs> I just could not for the life of me get into this one. Like it's, it's on par with, um, when Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like there was just something about the Shakespearean stuff, the timeline. I was like, oh my God, I'm so not happy. <laughs> 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 yeah, this one, I was okay with it. Um, but it just felt like there was a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, it made me here's the here's the you know, as we were talking about the, the, the Golden Globes and SAG earlier, and I think it's nothing against the actor who is stepping in to, to voice Tony Stark. But mm -hmm. damn it, Robert Downey Jr. is freaking Tony Stark. And I, and I think that's part of why these Tony Stark episodes just can't work for me, because to, Robert, da you know, Sometimes the actor just becomes that character and they're the seminal. It's like Christopher Reeve, a Superman or whatever. It's just, that's who I see when I, when I, when this character comes on the screen or whether there's live action animation or whatever. And it's like, I just, I just can't rock with the, I mean, he, he, he captures the, some of the, it's not so much the voice, well, it is part of, partly it is the voice, but a part of it is just the essence of like what Downey brought to the character. That this it's just hard for another person to to do that without it going into a you know pale imitation. You know, I've heard other people talk about the voicing, especially that one in particular, and it causing them. Um, have very similar feelings that you are expressing right now but i will be frankly honest i didn't i didn't notice anything <laughs> <laughs> i did not notice anything <laughs> I, I mean he does a great job of like he almost there's times he, he he nails sounding like robert but there's other times he doesn't and when he doesn't it just takes me out and then also it just rightfully so right yeah. So, like, I'm not saying, like, how dare you have that opinion? Yeah. It's just a voice. And and he does do a good impression. And I know, like, in my mind, um, well, I don't know because I skipped forward the, through the credits. So I didn't realize that different people were playing these parts. So I was just like, whatever. Um, I, I don't know why, but for some reason, it and honestly... None of them took me out. Um, I, I can tell. Um, maybe there's like a weird volume thing, but but I do know right away, like, I'm like, no, that that's there, that is Kate Planchette. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like that is Haley Atwell. Um, that is Benedict, but but I I just I don't know what it is, but I I'm just being honest and that kind of stuff so far has not taken me out. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure first season though, I did say that that yeah. wasn't Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you did. Wasn't. I remember us talking know. about it. Yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> okay. that one. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right, well. Yeah, I mean, that it was a fun episode. I mean, I will say I like like the Loki stuff. I mean, when, you know, with Tom, with, uh, we, that was definitely Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> and, and so I did like, the, there's that again, there were aspects of this episode I liked, um, but whenever it got to the third act, it, I don't know. It just felt 
it felt like the Marvel third act lately, where it's just like things just got kind of muddled and it just, yeah, it just, just didn't, didn't resonate for me. But I, 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 but I do like the the Captain Carter through line that they have established here in this series. Uh, right. Cause I think that, that definitely, you know, definitely grounds it some, um, to have that sort of ser- that have that serialized storytelling uh, throughout throughout the season. Yeah, well, there needed to be payoff because yeah. I think I think that's what I found about the first season. Like I I got a lot of payoff about mm-hmm. things, um, whether they were smaller, more intimate stories, or there were connections to a bigger overarching story. I was like, okay. Now I can see why I would get invested in that. But this one, like up until the 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 um, Captain Carter of it all, you're like, okay, why do I care? Where, where how <laughs> are we gonna like go back to Nebula anytime soon? Like, what? Why do I? Why did I have to spend that time there? Right. Um, but but with the Captain character, Captain Carter episodes, you're kind of like, okay, I'm. I'm now experiencing this scenario, but I have my avatar to experience Mm -hmm. it with. I have someone who's there, too. Um, And quickly, at the end of this episode, it doesn't just become a Captain Carter through line, but we see another appearance of Doctor Strange, who um, is going to be her ride out of 1602, but they have to make a stop. Um, Stop first. And yep. that brings us to the final episode. What if Strange Supreme intervened? Okay, so everyone listening, please rewind back to when we we're talking about Captain Carter <laughs> <laughs> and my lack of investment in Captain Carter and Steve Rogers. So mm-hmm. I find it so interesting how it took one freaking episode in season one of What If. For me to get invested in Doctor Strange and his obsession with Christine. Yep. <laughs> yes. And now we're equating that to the multiple scenarios we've seen of, of the cursed Captain Carter not being able to be with her Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. Like... Like, I appreciate the parallel so much. We all know yeah. what a romantic, like a, a lovesick puppy I am. But come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just found that to be so, like, interesting. But I don't feel like they went as, I don't think it hit as as hard as it should have or could have. No. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I yeah. don't know if that's because. Um, there wasn't any redemption for Doctor Strange leading up to this moment. So this whole season, um, we didn't we didn't see him except for these these um, cliff ha- or these like teasing clips along the way, and then he's all the ultimate bad guy at the end. And you're just like, okay, but we. <laughs> You have, but you almost have to, as a viewer, remember who you met in the first season yeah. to really understand his plight. So it's just a lot of work where we got Captain Carter so much of this season. Like, I, I wish they would have, we would have had it a Stephen Strange episode just so that we could, we could really understand the parallel and it could hit a bit harder. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, completely agree with your analysis there because yeah it just yeah it it, honestly i i got i kind of checked out um with 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 the fight when i got what with the reveal and the gag with the you know uh, glory like kahori trying to save you know with the portals and everybody at the you know Everyone by the end, everyone everyone was overpowered. Strange was overpowered. She was overpowered. Yep. Hori was overpowered. And I felt like I was watching uh, Secret Invasion again um, <laughs> with that finale. Let's and, not go to that what if scenario. <laughs> nope. What if that uh, never happened? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I was checked out by the end of it, and I just, I, I, I was, I, I honestly, I, I was really left meh 
with the last uh, half of 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 the of the, of the season. Um, it you uh, know you raised a good point before. Like I think you mentioned it in episode eight when we were talking about like it, like the ending scene felt like the Marvel third act, mm-hmm. and I feel as though whether it be the Thor Ragnarok episode, whether it be Hela and the Ten Rings. Avengers assembled in 1602 or the last one, like pretty much all of these episodes, the the third act, it's just so much noise and chaos mm-hmm. that I think the most interesting fight sequence was the, in the second episode mm-hmm. with, with Peter, like, and, and it just, there, how is it? That, yeah, okay. How is it that we can have, in the MCU, we can have such triumphant and amazing third acts as found in movies like Infinity War, Endgame. Um, Endgame went on a little bit too long. Let me take that back. Um. What's another one? Captain America Civil War. Civil War. <laughs> oh my God, that third act. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you got your your TV shows with your Lokis, okay? The lo- the third, the final episodes in both Loki seasons, okay? It's not a lot of punch punch. It's a lot of talking. Like, yeah. I would love for what if one of these scenarios where we had like we didn't have a ending sequence that had so much freaking action okay yeah. because it just i don't know i i yeah. just it felt like every episode consistently throughout the season had 20 minutes of too much noise yeah yeah and uh yeah i was as I was watching and I was like, you know, I was like, okay, I know it's a comic book show, but can it that one back a little bit? Right. <laughs> yeah. right. I, mean, I, I know, know it's genre, but, a half hour. I know there's there we can't have too many stakes, but we need to care about some of these characters. We need to have good dialogue. We need to have at the end of the day a story of some something about mm-hmm. something. And and I think I think they just they got two they it's like they they found a um a formula mm-hmm. and they just cr- ma- mapped out every episode and copied that formula and i was like yeah. oh my god and when you watch it like every single day you re- it really gets driven home <laughs> well that that formula i mean it just yeah. like i said i i, I think uh, yeah, because I once I think I watched. Yeah, I, I pretty much I think the first couple I missed. The f- I think I didn't, Christmas Day I didn't watch any, but the other days I did. Like uh, the rest of the time, I, I I watched as they as they were released. And yeah, by the end of the week, and and coming, you know, coming two weeks later after um, after the last episode, or, or I guess a week later, however many days later, it just became. It's, it, Talking about it tonight, I'm glad you know. I'm glad you have very detailed show notes uh, because it did help. And ha- you know, having a dialogue with you has helped me. Like, oh yeah, there's some part- parts of it because honestly, prior to prior to talking with you tonight about these episodes, it just became one big massive noise right. <laughs> in my head that had that really, uh, you know, I was really struggling to like figure out what stood out in in this season. Um, and I think talking with you tonight and hopefully our listeners, you know, I'd love to hear from you all, like, you know, yeah. your reactions to, to things we talked about. But, you know, let us know what stood out to you um, in, in these episodes, because honestly, this release strategy just put it and made it for me and made it this one big, massive bit of noise, which why I generally don't binge, because that's what happens, at least for me. Yeah. No, I, and it happened to be, and I did binge it, and um, the five episodes that I think I liked the first. Well, no, I don't because I really didn't like that Nebula episode. 
I can't yeah. stress that <laughs> enough. And I mean, like, I, it's like the Nebula episode, and then everyone else is at the same table. <laughs> the <laughs> Navy of you, I don't know. Um, I, nothing is going to stand out to me. And I know that Will and I are not on the same page about this episode from season one, but the zombie Spider-Man yeah. episode from season one. <laughs> See, that's I love it. it so much. Yeah. Yeah. And the strange episode. I mean, exactly. how, yeah, those stood out. And, and this season, I just, no, there's no, there's no moment that's just sort of like, Oh yeah, that I'm a, you know, a year from now, when we talk about season three of what if, and maybe, you know, maybe I, I'll, I will, you know, and it's stand, funny, to correct it. Yeah. Yeah. It's but, funny that you bring up the strange episode because yeah. the strange episode in season one focused entirely on him. Mm -hmm. And we were just going through these scenarios and yeah. he was driven mad and insane. It was like an extended, it, it didn't feel so much like a what if scenario, as a um, extended epilogue of his first movie, mm -hmm. and then a preview that was that was going to come with the second movie, and we know how that pans out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, it it felt like much more than the concept of what if, where in this season, as we're talking about it, and we have these episodes that are focused on a single character, everything falls flat because. It it still doesn't feel like it's transcending this um, this this show, or is building upon something we already know about. It just feels like one offs, which I understand is kind of yeah. the concept of what if. But again, really? I think I think people who liked this season did not like a lot of season one, and now. Right we're on the opposite where we yeah. like season one and then so season two fell fell a little bit flat very curious about what is to come with season three though yeah yeah uh, so. yeah, uh, yeah I, I am as well watch the trailer again right before we record it uh tonight and uh we'll, we'll see how it goes but you know but you know they, marvel has sold that uh us on that you know this is canon and these things do count in the live action universe uh but you know but as you said i mean we we were anticipating some payoff with with some of the things we saw here and and we didn't get some of that in in, in live action so i'm kind of you know i'm not holding my breath <laughs> uh with uh with things that happened in this season showing up in live action and it may be wrong but um or maybe a little small subtle thing um here and just, there but yeah i just love how on the rundown i wrote william shakespeare acting and thory slash captain carter <laughs> <laughs> thory thory guys i added a y on thor <laughs> <laughs> I'm just staring at it this whole time, like, yep. oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> but actually, not too many typos other than that. Um, yep. yeah, there's there's been a lot. Um, I know we can talk about what we're looking forward to in 2024. Um, I feel like everyone knows what I'm looking forward to. So unless we'll Next week, for those listening, we are going to start our Echo watch. Um, we're just, we know everything dropped this week for Echo season one. Um, but we're, we're doing, we're enacting the. <laughs> the, the, the One Piece rules. <laughs> the One Piece rules. Um, and we're just doing two episodes at a time starting next week. So look forward to that. And and there will be other stuff to come on top of it. And no, we are not going to watch that Aquaman movie. Nope, 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 nope. Watch the trailers, people. I've seen the trailers. I was actually going to send you a direct message, Will. <laughs> and, say, <laughs> and tell you and be like, Will, I've, I, I saw Aquaman too. And then when you when you say what you went to the theater, I was like, no, but I've seen that trailer because they aired <laughs> it. 
so many times while I was watching stuff over break that I felt as though I had actually seen the movie. <laughs> okay. I felt as though after two weeks I had memorized every line of that trailer because I heard it so much. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I would have just been like, uh, April 1st is still uh, four yeah. months away. <laughs> 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 yeah, nah, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. I've I've heard some early review, early things about Echo, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm reserving judgment. I'm uh, I'm trying to avoid things uh, with that, but yeah, I know we have I know we have our road ahead in 2024. Um, uh, yeah, I know obviously you're looking forward to the the Bear season three. Um, but, you know, I guess I guess the way I look at 2024 is this this is the bridge year. Because so many things got like screwed, you know, between Marvel slowing things down because of just strike, con you know, content overload that they've had the last few years, cutting costs, and 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 all, you know, I really think this, like I said, this just kind of feels like a bridge year as far as shows. I mean, I know we'll get like House of the Dragon. Yeah, I I was surprised when you said the bear season three and not House of the Dragon because I was totally yeah. talking about House of the Dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, Which, yeah. I, well, I, knew, I, I was I was saving that for both of us. That's a mutual one. That's like number one on our list, other than the boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like like the boys, House of Dragon, uh, Doom Part Two will be interesting. Um, Joker Two. Yeah. We got some movies, um, but but honestly, I'm looking forward to the new Deadpool movie, um, yeah, mainly agree. out of out of the movies to come, and and we'll see. I I'm always just more curious about some of the new shows mm -hmm. or um, sophomore season. Will will it will it pick back up to where it left off? Um, so so we'll see what what the gems are this yeah. year we got we yeah. got a lot of good gems last year and the year before so so who knows i i kind of like roads ahead are good but at the same time i'm just like we'll see what happens like like i i still try to keep my expectations low yeah, okay exactly but yeah. house of the dragon season two is gonna be awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, I'm just excited to be back in that world. It's been like what yeah. feels like two years, but it's just been just over a year. But I'm I'm excited to return and having those discussions yep. um, about that show and to see what Me happens. Um, mainly, yeah. mainly just excited for that, especially since it's going to be a little bit before we get Last of Us season two. So I like how we're kind of staggering those two shows. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, and then and then like and then like just like last year where we we had we discovered some new things, uh, like you know like with the One Piece, uh, maybe there'll be some things that we'll come across this year that uh, that will strike our fancy and we'll we'll add it to the rotation. Yep. Um, we might even pick up Last Air Render on Netflix, which is coming out in February. So, yep. Yeah, and I also was looking at Shogun as well. It's another one that we made. I was going to see if you were inter might be interested in. Maybe I I honestly have not heard about that one, but yeah. Um, on, that, <laughs> on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on. Twitter, also known as X, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at S.J. Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>